Hey there, my fellow designers and creatives. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another video in my YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to take a look at gradients. I'm gonna explain how to make stunning gradients. I'm gonna explain the science behind what makes a good gradient with a bunch of tips and tricks. As you can see, I have a lot to cover. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now, before I get started, make sure to check out the ultimate guide to learn product design if you haven't done already. It's a framework that I've introduced and I put across uh, that's gonna explain a lot of things about how to get started as a product designer. Uh, there are a bunch of chapters that you can check out uh, for you to get started. Uh, I'm going to be releasing more chapters later on. So if you haven't, check everything out already. All right, so now let's get back to the tutorial. All right, so here I have a circle and I've applied two colors. And if I click on uh, the linear, you can see that I have two colors applied over here. One is a purple color and then one we have uh, this sort of a green color. Okay, now each of these two things that we see over here are called as stops. Um, a lot of other people have different names. They call it nodes as well, but I like to call it stop. So I'm just going to use that term across the entire tutorial, right? Now, the moment you create a gradient, a lot of times you end up with this gray area. Okay. You can see that here it's a lot brighter. Here it's a lot brighter, but then here it gets washed out quite a bit. It gets very muddy. Right. And in order to check what that is, I'm just going to uh, press uh, R, create a rectangle and then come here and just pull that color. Right. And as you can see over here, it's in this muddy section area, right? It's not in the grays. It's not in the whites. It's not in the blacks. It's sort of in the middle with this gray and it's got this uh, hot, you know, pink sort of, a, um, you know, hue to it. Right. This is the first thing that makes a gradient look really, really bad. Okay. Now there are multiple ways to fix it. And I'm just going to go step by step. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you never have anything like this. And just by looking at your gradient, you'll figure out whether this is muddy or not. Okay. Now I'm going to look, take a look at these two colors over here. And here you can see that this stop is, you know, it's, it's on the brighter side and it's no, not anywhere close to the gray area. And same here with the green, uh, you know, it's not near the muddy section, right? And you want to make sure that all your colors are in that spectrum. Okay. Now, how do you go ahead and fix it? Now, one of the things uh, that you can do is let's say I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. And I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to click anywhere in the middle and that's going to create another stop. Now, if you don't, if you want it to be in the center, what you can do is just double click anywhere and it's going to make everything, you know, in the center. So this is zero, this is 50% and this is hundred percent. Okay. And what you want to do here is you want to select this. All right. And I'm going to show you a very interesting technique later on, but for now, I'm just going to go manually and do it. I'm just going to remove this from the gray area. Okay. I'm just going to move it over and move it all the way over here until we sort of come over here to this section where it's not any more muddy, right? And I'm gonna keep the same hue, okay? I just don't, I don't wanna change the color, right? Now when you see over here, we get uh, this, which looks a lot better than this gradient. But the problem with this is that you can see this sort of a harsh line over here in the middle, okay? Now one concept that you need to understand is the distance of the colors versus the distance of the stops. What does that mean? All right, so we'll come over here and let's look at this. Now, if you see over here, this purple color, right? And just pay attention to this bar over here, this purple color, and you click on this color, these two are very close to each other, okay? But then the moment you click on this green color, this green color is far away. It's somewhere, you know, away from all of these two colors, okay? And that's the reason you get this strong color because in order for this gradient to transition from this color, which is all the way from here to this color, it has to go through so many other colors, right? But it doesn't have enough space to do it, which is why you get this weird harsh effect. And here also you can see that it's getting a little muddier on this part, okay? So what that means is if I were to make a really big rectangle like this, okay, I'm going to just copy the color. I'm just going to uh, copy it and paste it. You can see that it's a lot more subtle over here and it doesn't really look bad as a gradient. It's not the best, right? But if you compare these two, you can see that this is a lot more subtler and smoother compared to this. This also can definitely be improved, right? But this compared, comparing these two, this looks a lot better, right? And the other thing to note here is that it's because the distance over here is so much, like there's so much distance here, right? It's giving the gradient a lot more space to go and expand on the colors, which is why we don't really have this super harsh line that you see over here. 
But in this case, right, the stops are so close to each other, but the colors are still far away in the gradient. So I hope you understand my point. So what I'm trying to say is if you are actually going to use colors that are very far away from each other, make sure that the element that you're designing is actually quite big, right? Now, how do we put this in context of user interface design, right? So let's say you're designing some sort of a landing page, all right? So I'm just going to make this uh, 1440 by 900, okay? Now, if I take this and I just take this uh, gradient and I'm going to apply it over here, okay? And I'm also going to change the direction of this because I want more space. All right. Now this looks a lot better, right? But it's not still not the best gradient. And if you compare that to a gradient and you put that over here and let's say we rotate it like this. Okay. You can see that it's so harsh over here, but it's a lot more subtle over here. So you need to check the distance of the stops in relation to the entire user interface. Because now if I, I can zoom in over here and I can say that, oh, there's a lot of space over here. But in reality, there isn't a lot of space because my viewport is this much. This is my, this is the size of my website, right? So for me, this is the width. So I'm going to look at the output and see, okay, this is my output. All right. And this is one of the elements, which is super close to each other, right? So which means if the distance of the nodes is closer to each other, then there shouldn't be much gap in the hues over here between multiple colors. You want them to be closer. All right. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. Now let's assume that we uh, just pick this one. I'm going to duplicate this for a second. All right. And I'm going to have only one stop. Okay. Now, if we want to remove this gradient, right, this is one of the options, but the other option here is to change the other color itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this color. Okay. I'm going to paste that over here. Okay. And I'm just going to slightly move this either to the left side or the right side. Okay. So I can move it either to the right side. All right. This looks a lot more subtler. It looks a lot better as well. Or I can move it to the left side and give it, uh, let's pick this one and then move it over here to give it like a bluish tint, right? This sort of looks like part of like Instagram, right? And as you can see, these look a lot better than this. Okay. Now there are a lot more reasons why these two look a lot better than this. And it's not just because this has three and this has two. I can still make this look better, right? If I were to take this as an example, uh, and I'm going to add, let's say I'm going to add another stop, all right? I'm going to add this over here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to copy this color, paste this over here. I'm going to take this and move this a little bit more over to the other side. All right. This still looks a lot better, right? If you look at, if you, if you were to compare these two, right, you can see that this is a lot more nicer compared to this. And there are many reasons I'm going to cover just one of that. Okay. Cool. And if you were to uh, take a look at this and paste that over here, all right? And uh, let's go ahead and try to remove this, right? You can see that we now have a lot of space. And then even though we can see a little bit of a line, it's fine. And maybe I can just go ahead and reduce down this little bit, right? To get rid of that, okay? But you can see that all these colors, they're very close to each other. Here, there's one, here, there's another one. And then here it is another one right? They're very close to each other. And even this one, right? This isn't in the gray section. So we're pretty much sorted. Okay. So that's how you fix it. Now let's look at the second way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this gradient and I'm going to, we're just going to move all of this away. I'm going to bring this over to over here, right? Now what we did here was that we took this color and then it was initially over here, right? It was, uh, as you can see, it's quite gray over here. And then we moved it over, but how much do you move it? You know, how much is too much? Right. And what's, is there a smarter way to do this? Right. So let's understand. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the stop. Okay. And we just have two. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and we have a, we have a bunch of modes over here. We have hex, RGB, CSS, um, HSL and HSB. Now we're going to play around with either of these two. Now you can choose whichever you want. You can choose, um, HSL or you can choose HSB. I like to choose HSB because it's very similar to the, uh, the hex section and it's easier for me to navigate. Um, and what is the difference? I'm not going to get into that. There's a lot of easy documentation that you can read online. So you can look at that later, but I'm just going to go with HSB and you can also choose to follow along with HSB because it gets the job done. But if you want more details, go ahead and Google for stuff online. Now, when I click on this, we see three options. One is the hue, 
Then we have the uh, S stands for saturation. And what saturation basically means is the intensity of the color. How strong is the color? And I'm going to give you like an actual example. And the last one is the brightness. Okay. Now, these might be confusing. But the only thing to remember here is that if you understand hue and saturation, brightness should become automatically easy for you to understand. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and quickly uh, get a image. Right. So I'm going to go to Unsplash. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to Plugins. And then I'm going to go to Unsplash. I'm just going to randomly... Get, oh, let's try that again. I'm going to just get some random image. Uh, maybe that should be easy. Let's try uh, colorful. I think that's easy. Um, let's 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 see. I think uh, yeah. Let's try this image of a parrot. I think that's uh, this is easy. So if I come over here and increase the saturation, you can see that uh, the blue got a lot bluer, the yellow got a lot yellower, and the green got a lot greener, right? But if I go ahead and reduce the saturation, you see it takes away all the color, right? So it's no intensity to whatever the color was to super high intensity color, right? That is saturation. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is as we, we were over here. Okay. What we can do is if you come over here, you can see that we have a couple of values. We have the hue, which is basically which color is it? Red? Is it blue? Is it green? Then you have the saturation and how strong and saturation basically is more stronger as you can see here the colors are a lot more stronger compared to this so if i were to increase or decrease this you can see that it moves on the x-axis this makes it more stronger and this makes it white and white basically means no color right because white is combination of all colors right so it's no more going to be purple so this is our 67 just going to leave that as it is and here we have brightness okay so brightness is how bright is it so if i bring this down so basically brightness means that it gets a lot darker okay and here it gets a lot uh, brighter, right? And you can, as you can see over here, the whole color itself sort of disappears, okay? Um, and you can't see that color anymore. That color does not exist anymore, okay? And if we were to check on the other side, you can see that it becomes white, but then here it becomes black, okay? And in both cases, you don't see the other color, right? Even though, as you can see, the color over here is still 228, which is the purple color. Okay, so that is something that's very important to understand. One of the things that you can do is here, you want to make sure that these two values are the same for the other colors as well. So I'm going to copy the 67 and I'll come over here and here it is 67. Okay. I'm also going to come over here and set this to 100 so that it's the same thing. So we have 67, 100, 67 and 100. And here we have 83, which is basically the hue, right? So we can go ahead and change this and we're making sure that the hue stays the exact same. So by doing this, you can see that if I were to compare these two, you can see that this is a little bit more of a richer color compared to this. Okay. This is a little bit more richer compared to this. This looks like this looks a little washed out. Now, if you were to go ahead and add this middle stop, right? So let's try to go ahead and add that. I'm going to come over here and add that middle stop. Okay. I'm going to double click over here. And here we want to make sure that we have the same values. So we add 67 and then here we had 100. Okay. And also technically, all of these colors have the same saturation and brightness, but a different hue, right? And here we can go around and play with this a little bit, all right, to get what we want. Now in order, if we feel that this is too, uh, it does, it, there's a very hard line, what we can do is we can select this and we can just push this down a little bit to subtle off that effect, okay? So now if I bring this over here, you can see that this looks a lot better than this one. It looks a lot better. It looks a lot more seamless compared to this one. Here you can see the harsh line. Here you can see it's a little bit muddy. And here also you can see that, you know, it's a little darker on this side, right? We are still getting a little bit of gray area over here, right? So if I were to go ahead and let's try to go ahead and click over here and look at this, it's sort of in the gray area, but it's towards, you know, the, the brighter sides, as you can see, because the gray area is somewhere over here and it's very much on that, right? Now, the thing is, you can go add in another stop over here, right? You can add another one. But the problem is, it just becomes too complex. So maybe let's try it out over here, right? You can add another one over here. But then here again, you want to make this, if you make this 67 and then you make this 100, it does solve the problem. But again, you are now you have too many colors over here and that might overcomplicate, right? So this still looks a lot better, right? Maybe let me just, uh, you know, you know, 
you know show that as an example let's take this and then i'm going to add in another one over here um and then i'm just going to make this 67 and i'm going to make this 100 all right and now it's a little better i'm just going to drop this a little bit all right like you said here this is a little bit better we're getting a little bit of the oranges over here but again the problem is that the reason you're adding these more colors is because you're trying to add stronger colors in between this huge gap so from this pink to this green there's a lot of gap and in order to sort of soften that you're adding another extra color so you can go ahead and fix it if these are the exact colors that you want to use but then you might be over complicating things now here's another example here we have a simple skeleton screen uh, and we have these three uh, cards and there might be a chance that each of these three cards need three different colors but you want to make sure that they have the same intensity so what do you do now the first thing is to make sure is that here in this case uh, we want to make sure that the uh, s value and the h uh, and the brightness value are the same so 65 i'm just going to make this 80 and i'm going to probably make this 60 uh, to keep things simpler 60 and 80 and here we want to make this uh, 60 and 80 as well and right and we're just going to play around with the hue as we saw before okay so here this is more of an orange color and then here it's transitioning to a yellow color maybe i want to push it a little bit more to the yellow side uh, so that it looks a little bit better it's touching the greens but that's fine now i'm going to take this one um and then uh let me actually just go ahead and paste that over here i'm going to select this one and here what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have the same saturation and brightness colors we're just going to play around with the hue it's going to move this over uh, we want like a greenish color and I'm going to select this one and then we're going to move this over to uh, a blue bluish color over here and I'm going to move it and get a bluish color over here right we want to make sure that the colors are very close to each other all right uh, and then we're going to select this one um, we're going to probably go over here to the you know, purple and pink section and then I'm going to add in uh, a purple over here right so now all of these three things have pretty much the same intensity now another thing that i would like to do is if i were to duplicate this i still feel that these could be improved so i'm just going to go ahead and select this color uh, and then i'm just going to go ahead and increase the saturation a bit to make it a little bit brighter right so i'm going to make it 80 and 80 and then make this also 80 and 80 and i want to select all the other colors as well and i'm going to make this also 80 and 80 right i want it to be a little bit more on the brighter side and then here as well we can make this uh, 80 and 80 right so if you look at this um this is a little bit washed out uh, and i think this is a little bit more stronger right so this is still a much better gradient than this okay here's another example now in this case sometimes we want a gradient but within the same set of colors we don't want multiple colors right as you can see over here in this example we had two different colors but in this case we just want to have the same color and we want a gradient between the same color okay so what are you usually going to do is going to go ahead and uh, add a linear gradient and then make sure that the brightness of all of this is like 100 okay now you want to make sure that the initial color that you want is pretty sorted and i'm going to move this back to 80 and i'm going to make this 100 uh, because i sort of like that i'm going to make this also 80 and 100 so technically all of this is the same now you can choose either of the stops and just choose the one on the bottom and here you have multiple options right now you want to make sure that the hue is actually the same right you don't want to change the hue right so maybe you can have a small deviation of 5 to 10 points um, but you want to keep it over here so maybe i can just make this 20 right so now we have a couple of options so we can either move this over to the left okay but as you can see it feels like it's a little bit it's getting washed out a little bit so i'm going to undo that we can come down over here and make this a little darker that's also another option or what we can do is we can take this we can push this uh let's say we want to make this 20 you know let's make it to like 60 and here we take this and then we bump that to 120 right so 200 actually so we move this over here right now this might be a bit too strong so we're just going to bring this a little bit inside right but you're playing on the same axis now you can play on the other axis as well but make sure you do not go into the gray area so if you come over here we're very close to the gray area we're sort of pretty much on the gray area but we're in the white section so that's fine and then over here we're a little bit over here so now if you come look at these two um, you can see that this is still a gradient it's quite subtle and this looks like super washed out right and uh, that's also because that it's very close to the gray section over here you can see that you can sort of feel that it's in the gray section right so if i just go ahead over here and i increased um the saturation which means adding more color making it stronger right you can see that it's it's a much better gradient and it's here it's a little darker so let me push it up and increase the brightness 
so that it's a lot better right um, so this is how you play around with gradients in the same color and we can check this on light mode as well so i'm just going to go ahead and make this to be white and then take all of this uh, apply a white color i'm just going to come down over here and then slowly just add in some subtle grays over here right so you can see that this gradient works well on light mode and dark mode all right, so here is the file of the landing page of uh, the ultimate product design course that uh, I came put across. And as you can see, I am using a lot of gradients over here. As you can see, there's a lot of gradients over here. There's a gradient over here. Um, and even in this section, you can see that I'm using the gradients. And as you can see, these are same color gradients, right? Um, it's, it's the same purple color here. It's the same blue. Um, each, you know, number does not have multiple colors. It's the same color and it's a little bit lighter over here, right? So I am using these gradients and you can see over here that I've added a gradient here uh, as well, right? Now, the interesting thing over here, and maybe even look at this also, right? So if you look at this one, um, you can see that it's a radial gradient and here we have two colors which are very close to each other, right? You can see this color is over here and then this color is over here and then it, it looks uh, pretty good. Now, uh, what I want to quickly talk about are these things, right? So I've used the same principles over here and uh, I'm using neutral colors over here, right? So this, these are not, you know, sort of like colorful colors. These are like your grays and blacks and whites. And if you see over here, I've used linear gradient and then you can see that uh, here it's white and here it's a little bit darker. And I usually add a bit of the blue section over here. So I make sure I come here to the blue. Now, the thing is that all of these are in the gray section. Now I'm playing with only grays, blacks, and whites, right? So if you are playing with grays, blacks, and whites, make sure you're using gray, blacks, and whites. You know, don't bring in any other color. It's just going to make it look bad, right? Um, I think I, I probably would want to show uh, this one over here, right? So this one, this has a very subtle gradient, right? But if you come over here, you can see that this, I'm very close here to the white section. And here, um, this is around three and this is 97. And over here, um, I've not followed that because I wanted it to be a stronger color. So if I could probably bring this in closer, you can see we get that nice grayish uh, color. Now, the problem is if I change it to any other color, it does get the job done, but that's not the th effect that I'm going for. I'm going for a more of a metallic look. So if you're going for a metallic look, always stick with uh, the blue section um, that will uh, sort of solve uh, a lot of the problems for you, right? So that's also something that you can do. If you're using neutral colors, make sure to stick in the grays, right? I can come over here and probably move this a little bit over and get like a bluish tint as well. That also looks uh, pretty nice, but then I wanted it to be a little bit more whiter and brighter, right? That was the effect that I'm going for. The importance here is subtlety. Be subtle, don't be too aggressive with your gradients. Unless aggression is the effect you're going for, keep it simple. Now, here's a card that I have, all right? And uh, I want this section to sort of look different compared to this section, okay? And I want to use it, uh, and I want to use a simple set of gradients to make it look better. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is before I get into the gradients, let's just see if we can visually distinct it, uh, make it look like a button without adding any gradients, okay? So now both of these are the same colors. As you can see, both of these are the same colors. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and uh, let me just actually move this up. Okay, there we go. Um, and here we have this. Okay, so we have 65. I'm going to make this 80, whatever. And what I'm going to do is play around with this, right? We want to keep the hue the same. We don't want to change that. So maybe I go ahead and increase um, the saturation. But that now you can see that this looks more strong and this looks, you know, less, you know, like washed out. So this is not the effect that we want. So I'm just going to go ahead and control Z that. Okay, and I'm going to move this back over here. Um, just go reset the colors. Okay, so which means that I don't want to increase the saturation. If I want to decrease the saturation, you can see that it's getting that washed out effect, which and we are entering the gray section, which we don't really want. So let's keep that as it is. So the only thing left for us is to play around with this. Okay, so if I were to go ahead and increase this, all right, this this looks a little bit fine right? Uh, this looks lo this looks a little bit better, but again, this looks like there's so much light being put on over here. And if I come down over here, um, we this looks a lot better, right? This looks honestly like a lot better. It feels like this is on top. So this is putting its shadow on this section, right? Uh, and I honestly like this, okay? Now let's try to make a couple more duplicates and see if we can do some interesting stuff. So maybe over here, I'm just going to increase, let's say, the saturation a little bit. All right. If I increase the saturation a little bit, it's fine. I'm just moving it like by five, six, right? It, it's not really looking that ugly, right? It looks fine. Now, if I look at both of these, I sort of like this one where I've increased the saturation a little bit. Okay. 
Now, with this, let's go forward a little bit more. Okay, what I'm gonna do here is now I'm gonna add some sort of a gradient. Okay, so I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna add in a linear gradient. Uh, make sure that all of this is the same. Now we want the top part to be a lot more darker. Okay, so what that means is I'm gonna increase, uh, decrease the brightness. Okay, so I'm just gonna decrease the brightness as you see over here. Actually, I need to select uh, this one this one okay and then decrease the brightness so now you can see over here that we're getting this nice shadow effect which is looking pretty cool all right you can see that it you can almost see that it's sort of like this emboss you know like bevel effect maybe it's a bit too harsh so i'm just going to just increase this value over here um, until we sort of see a little bit of it okay now we now this is still technically a gradient right as you can see it's still a gradient now another way to do this if i were to duplicate the one on top and uh, if I bring it over, let's bring it actually down. Okay. And I select this, I add this, all right. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and in the fill section, I'm gonna add a fill layer. And then I'm gonna first of all set this to, you know, 100%. And then I'm gonna add in a linear gradient. So one is gonna be pure black and the other one is gonna be over here. Now, here are a couple of things that you can do. One is you can obviously drop down the opacity because that is way too harsh, all right? And you can get a subtler gradient, so maybe like 25%, and you can see that these both pretty much look the same, all right? I sort of like this one. Now, the other option over here is uh, if I were to make a duplicate of this and bring this down. So with this one, what I'm gonna try is I'm gonna set this back to 100%, okay? And we're gonna try blending modes. So you click on this, and we come over here, and you can see uh, this button, which is a blending mode. And you can click on multiple ones. And I'm not going to get into the science of this, okay? But if you are in the dark section, you want to probably choose uh, the six of these over here. So lighten, all right, screen, and color dodge, they don't pretty much do the anything. Uh, that's because you need to, if, if they are white in color, they have an effect. But if, if you have blacks, you want to play around with these three things. Overlay, soft light, and hard light. So if I click on overlay, you can see that it's, it's a lot stronger, which we probably might not need. Now, this might still be fine, and you can drop the opacity over here as well. Okay? And you can try soft light, which is a little less harsh, and then you can try hard light, which is quite harsh, right? So even if I were to choose, like, overlay, uh, you can see that overlay still sort of maintains the blue color. Hard light makes it quite black and that's fine. And we can maybe drop the opacity to like 25% or a little bit maybe even to like 30% in this case. And uh, that is also fine, okay? So if we, if we were to complete the first one and the last second one, you can see that uh, there's such a big beautiful difference in terms of gradients over here, right? So this is another way of using gradients. Now this was an original dribble shot and as you can see there is so much of muddiness going on, right? I can just easily pick colors and I can click over here and then we can see that, see this is in the muddy section. Um, let's pick another color here. This is also in the muddy section. Um, here as well, this is in the muddy section, right? So these are not really great gradients, unless this is the effect. If this is not the effect, then you pretty much don't want to uh, go with this, okay? And what I did was I went ahead and uh, created a version of that and I bought it over here. Okay, and it's just the same thing, right? I added a few colors over here and just added a little bit of a layer blur so we can blur that. Um, and now the colors are a lot more better, right? So if you click on any of the colors, so if I were to create a rectangle and then click on any of these colors, uh, you can see that they're not in the gray area. They're a little bit in the gray area, but they're closer to the white area, right? So it's still fine, okay? And it doesn't look off. You can clearly see the difference over here and here, all right? Um, so it's just a little bit of tweaking. All right, and uh, here as well, this is out of the gray area. It's a little bit on the white area, so that's that's fine. With simple tweaks like that, you can make your gradient look a lot stronger and a lot better. Now, if you go to Gumroad, you can see that these colors are not very high saturated colors. You know, they're not strong colors, but it still doesn't look washed out and gray. Why is that, right? So we have a lot of these. Uh, this is definitely dark and highly saturated, and it's actually quite darker as well. Okay, and uh, this is fine, but none of these look gray in color, like even this, right? They don't look gray in color. Why is that, right? So if you were to take like a few screenshots and you know, just let me just get, grab a screenshot and we can go around and see where they are in the color picker, all right? It's gonna come over here and then paste, oops, uh, paste it over here, okay? So I'm gonna just pick uh, this color over here and if I come over here, you can see that it's very close. It's out of the gray area. It's just out of the gray area and it's very close uh, to the bright white side. Right, and I'm going to take this one again and then copy this color. And here you can see it's way out of the gray area and it's very close to the bright section. 
right? So you want to make sure that you're always in the non-gray areas if you want to have really good colors. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. So till then, take care and bye-bye.